Hello, friends, and welcome back. Today, I hope you listened to the last uh, episode, which was 147. Today, we're going to be talking about episode 148. Lou, what do you think about episode 147? I love the last episode. I think I told you before we started here today, as often as we repeat and go over things again, I think it's important because the um, talk about illusion, the illusion we live in and comparing our lives to dream state and how knowledge of uh, uh, knowledge of and our spirituality tends to dissolve that dream state for us. As many times as we've gone over that, you went over it a little different time and a little different way in the last episode, and it landed really hard for me. So, like, I had the concepts, but still, oh, I love the way you put that. <laughs> this repeating things and going over again, and you do it very well, and you do it in a different way each time, and, and it's going to land for people differently. And again, w you may have heard that a uh, uh, hundred episodes ago, you may have heard the concept of illusion. But now you have so many more skills at this episode than you had the first time you heard it. So you hear it again, and it makes more sense to you. So, thank you, thank you for saying that, Lou. I, yeah. uh, as I said, you know, it doesn't. It, it's it's the analogy is that of whistling. I have my eight-year-old grandson <laughs> trying to learn how to whistle, and you know, he looks, he hears me and his father whistling. And he said, I want to whistle. And it doesn't come right away. It comes, he's just practicing all the time to the point where everybody else around him says, stop. You know, <laughs> but he, you can see that his whistling skills are getting there. And it happens slowly. Yep. All, this wisdom, this knowledge will help you get to the next stage, friends. If you just keep at it, you have to keep persisting. Keep, And you don't have to do anything. The beauty is I don't ask you to sit down and meditate. I don't ask you to read this and go over it or go to the temple. Nothing like that. Just listen right. and it'll sink in and it'll change your life. There's a saying I love where it says no man ever crosses the same river twice because it's mm. never the same river and it's never the same man. Yeah. And this is what's happening in this process is that you're hearing that message. If you heard it 100 years ago, you were at this place 100 episodes ago. But. Now at this episode, you have more skills, you have more knowledge, you've learned more. It means something different to you when you hear it this time because you're a different person. You've taken in all this other knowledge that we've that we've taken in in the meantime. So it's really it, that repetition is important. Hearing it again with what you know now as opposed to what you heard 50 episodes ago or 100 episodes is so important. Good point. Very good mm -hmm. point. Okay, so today we are going to be doing episode, uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. And verse 8 says, we talked last time, not last time, but the episode before that, we did, uh, Krishna talked about sattva and rajas. Those are the three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. We talked about sattva, we talked about rajas. And we'll talk, there's lots more. You can write a whole book on sattva. You can write a whole book on tamas. You can write a whole book on rajas. So today he's going to briefly talk about tamas. The verse says, but no tamas to be born of ignorance, the deluder of all the embodied uh, selves. It binds fast through heedlessness, through indolence, and through sleep. Now, if I looked it up in the dictionary to say, what does heedlessness and indolence mean? Heedlessness means a reckless lack of care or attention. It's like driving a car very fast and taking risks, not just with your own life and your own car, but also putting other people carelessly, recklessly, without caring, without paying attention, putting their lives at risk. That's being heedless. That's a typical... That's a typical tamasic quality. People who don't care that right. much, don't pay attention and do things that put themselves and others or the environment or the world at risk. Indolence means avoidance of activity or exertion, laziness. Mm -hmm. A lot of tamasic people are lazy. They don't actually feel like really doing anything or becoming rajasic till late in the morning. Whereas sattvic people get up first thing in the morning before bed, sunrise, and they're active. Rajasic people also get up early, but not as early as sattvic, and right. action starts early. Tamasic people, their action doesn't start till, say, 10, 30, 11, before they actually start to get moving. 
Uh, they may get up, they may even get out of bed, but they're dragging their feet until later in the morning. That's tamas. Right. You need to convert the tamas to rajas and from rajas to sat sattva. This is the last of the three gunas that we were talking about. Tamas is an expression of ignorance. Ignorance not of mathematics and science, but ignorance just in terms of these kind of uh, ideas, these scriptural ideas. By not having that, it makes you, they may be very smart, they may know about geography and biology and botany, but they may, may be ignorant as far as this is concerned and therefore be tamasic. They live in a deluded state. A delusion is where no matter what other people tell you, you still believe in something. So a person could be deluded that uh, of, of something that's false. But everybody says, no, that is not so, but they believe it. They live in a deluded state. They don't know the purpose of their existence, why they're born, why they're here, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to get to become the self. They, their lives are dull, insipid, basically geared only towards satisfying their physical needs and mm -hmm. that of their immediate family. So tamasic people care about themselves, they care about their spouses, they care about their kids. And essentially beyond that circle, there's not much caring. So their dull, insipid life is basically like an animalistic life. Take care of myself, indulge in the sensory fulfillment of my sensory needs bereft of action or reaction. It's pure ignorance, not disposed to action. So you don't want to act. You want to get something without acting. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a key. Rajasic people want to act because their fruit, they, they, they say, this action will get me this fruit. So they act, right. act, act. The whole drive is to get the fruit. They're anxious to get the fruit. They're disturbed and agitated because of that. Tamasic people want to get the fruit, but they don't want to act. So how do they do it? They try and gamble, for instance. That's a tamasic activity where you say, I'll bet $10 and I hope to get back 100. I, I, I'll bet this and get back. I want to get something for free, anything that they can get for free. By the way, the scriptures say nothing is for free. You're mm -hmm. always paying some price whether you know it or right. not. And we can talk about that to say, what exactly price am I paying? In the Ramayana, Ram and Sita and Lakshman have to be ferried over across the river. Now the ferryman looks at Ram and Lakshman and Sita and says, oh my God, you're the king. You've been exiled to the forest and, and your, your God incarnated. I cannot take any money from you. And Ram says, I have no money to give you. And he says, I cannot take any money from you. And Ram says, no, I will not go across unless you take this ring. And he gives him, gives him his royal ring, very expensive. And the boatman says, to take you across the river, to you giving me this, this is more than I would earn in 10 lifetimes. And he says, no, this is, you have to take it. I'm not going to take this ride for free. So most of us try to get where they say, you know, buy one, get one free, buy one, get 50% off the second. Right. That, you're paying a price. And we can, we can talk about what exactly you're paying. But in chapter three, Krishna says, those who eat without producing are thieves, or he who eats without producing is a thief. That's what in chapter three. Tamasic people want to eat without producing. Without producing right. means people, you know, do something in like a yagna. They go out, they work, they harvest the fruit, they plant the seeds, they harvest the vegetables, they come, they cook it. All of this effort goes before you can actually sit down and eat. Somebody who just comes and sits, hey, sits down and eats something that somebody else has taken all the trouble to do is a thief or he's tamasic and he's tamasic. So there's no uh, free lunch. So always when you're tamasic if you feel and listen by the way every person every one of us has tamasic qualities rajasic qualities and sattvic it's a matter of what proportion it is so we want to strive to bring ourselves up to the highest level which is where sattva predominates and rajas is less and tamas is less if you don't have tamas by the way you cannot rest if you don't have tamas you cannot sleep those who are not tamasic in order to get to sleep you have to unwind. That right. is tamas. 
after sunset. We, if you look, go back to my previous episodes, I just divided the day into what is the most sattvic period, rajasic period, tamasic period. Tamas starts after sundown. So after sundown, you start to unwind. Your body is, moves into the tamasic, and it's necessary so that you can sleep. If you don't have any tamas, you won't be able to sleep because the rajas takes over, and rajas makes you very, very active. So, uh, but if you're tamasic and you want to get higher, when you see uh, you have to go up three flights of stairs, instead of taking the elevator, take the stairs. Mm -hmm. Start to move, start to do things. That'll help you get out of tamas. So enough said about that. Let's go to verse 9. Sattva attaches to happiness. Rajas attaches to action. While tamas, having veiled knowledge, attaches to heedlessness. We talked about what heedlessness was. The three gunas serve to bind the purusha. You remember we talked about purusha being the spirit, atman, yep. brahman, life, god, that attaches to prakriti, which is matter, or the body. So life, consciousness, attaches to this material body to produce us as human beings and all life forms to this world. In that life form, happiness is different from pleasure. When I eat something that I like, any contact with a sense object for my sense organ produces pleasure. Right. But that pleasure is short-lived. There's a birth to that pleasure and a death to that pleasure. The birth is when it touches the sense organ, when there's contact, and the death is when that contact goes away. And that immediate pleasure dissipates into displeasure or unhappiness that that has gone away. Happiness, on the other hand, is should be more constant. And we are happy, and that happiness comes from being sattvic. And, and we will talk about what exactly one needs to do to get to that happiness. But sattva, the quality, the guna of sattva is attached to happiness and knowledge. It promotes peace and happiness, not only for the person who is sattvic, but also for the world and the people around him. So people around sattvic people tend to just like being around that sattvic person because they feel happy and at peace and gain knowledge from him or her. Rajasic people, on the other hand, become fully involved in the affairs of the world. They act, act, act. And when you're sitting next to a Rajasic person, you start to feel uneasy. You sit next to a Sattvic person, you start to feel peaceful. Acting nonstop for fulfilling their desires, such Rajasic people continue to act and act. And in, by doing so, they develop more desires. And we have talked many times about that, but very briefly. You have a desire, you have a thought, that thought becomes a desire, that desire becomes an action, you mm -hmm. act to fulfill that desire. That action can have two results. One is you fulfill your desire, in which case you say, wow, that desire felt so good to satisfy it, I want more. Right. So you're developing more desires. Or the second possibility is you act and you do not fulfill that desire in which case you have a greater desire to fulfill it. So either way, the action to fulfill one desire results in more desires at the end. And that's right. how we are producing. The rajasic people produce, produce more and more desires. There's endless desires causing them endless feverish activity. Why mm -hmm. feverish? Because the mind is just racing with agitation for these desires and the right. activity is feverish activity, not efficient activity such as a sattvic person does. A tamasic person is ignorant of the higher values. They only know the lower values, which is satisfying the senses. They remain superstitious that if I do this, good things will happen. If I do that, good things will happen. If I go to a temple and I pray, they don't really mean to pray. They don't even know what they're doing. But they think that by going and offering money, fruits, vegetables, whatever it is, or doing things in a superstitious manner, their wishes will be fulfilled. They won't. They, those tamasic people, are heedless, uncaring, recklessly indifferent in the world. So the motto is act, but do not be attached to the action and do not be obsessed to, right. with the action. Just do what you ought to do without regard to for the fruit. 
you have to have some regard for the fruit because you're not self-realized. Sure. A anybody that does an action has to be thinking, what am I going to get out of it? But try and minimize that and try and do it more as a karma yoga. Were you going to say something, Lou? No, nope, I was just agreeing with your points there. Okay. This is a, this is a subtle line between action and for yourself and action for a higher purpose. But oftentimes the way to get there is to combine the two, right? You can you can have your eye on a fruit of your action, but also try to get a an outcome for other people as well. That's right. So yeah, all of us need to act. If you you cannot, not even a self-realized person can stay without acting. We act nonstop every time as we're oh, even doing sitting there totally silent for hours at end meditating you're acting yep. you may not think that you're acting because you're not moving but by putting yourself in a state of meditation you are acting you're performing meditation verse 10 sattva arises having predominated over rajas and tamas rajas arises having predominated over sattva and tamas similarly Tamas arises, predominating over sattva and rajas. Now, what that means is that you cannot predominate one guna unless the others are subdued at that time, because they're all three going together. Right. Im imagine there's just like a con convergence of three lanes on a highway. Only one car can go in that one last lane. All three lanes are coming together. You have to allow one to go ahead and the other two to stop back. So that's what happens. At some point during the day, one guna will predominate. At the evening after sunrise, a sunset, I'm sorry, you find it hard to sit down and do your spiritual studies. At that time, tamas will predominate. Right. What Krishna says here is that when sattva predominates over rajas and tamas, that's when it shows itself, and similarly with the others. Human beings are a combination of purusha, or spirit, or consciousness, and prakriti, or matter. Prakriti matter has these three gunas, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. We talked about this. Each and every human being has these three gunas, but in different proportions. This verse shows how one will predominate over the other two, and depending on which one predominates over the other two, th those people will show distinct characteristics which are associated with these gunas. Sattvic people will show sattvic qualities, rajasic mm -hmm. people will show rajasic, etc. The next three verses, which we'll do in the next episode, 11, 12, and 13, describe specific traits and characteristics of the lives of sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic uh, people. So 11 will be sattva, verse 11, verse 12 will be rajas, and verse 13 will be tamas. Rajas has obsession and craving. Number one, I have to act. I have to okay. do something. Number two, I'm attached to the action itself. Number three, I have great anxiety and obsession for the fruit of the action. Sattvic person has no attachment to the action or the fruit. He says, okay, I have to do this. It ought to be done. Of course, there has to be fruit in mind, otherwise you would not act. But while you're acting, you do not have any anxiety for the fruit if you're acting in a sattvic way. You do it, you try not to uh, look for money or fame or popularity right. or a pat on the back. You just do it because it ought to be done. And if you do that, friends, you will see that the rewards are greater than what you would do in a rajasic manner. Lou, any comments? Now, another fascinating episode and uh, as we explore the, these gunas here. And it's interesting to see how they interact. I think you said in an episode before they travel together, but they fight all the time. And this is basically what we're describing here. Yeah. And if we have a few minutes... I, I want to just basically say that we should focus on trying to get to be a sattvic person. And, and we have discussed what that sattvic person does. But getting to sattvic state is not the end point. You need to get beyond sattva to, to becoming self-realized. You cannot expect that very few of us, if any, 
are going to become self-realized in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. If you were, you'd probably be sitting in the Himalayas right now, not, <laughs> not listening to a podcast or watching TV. Um, so I doubt that any one of us is going to be self-realized. But as Krishna said, the more you get along this line, on this journey towards sattva, the more it'll help you the next time. So, for instance, you know, and there are benefits in this life as well. There's there's benefits of peace. There's benefits of of enjoyment. There's there's just that freedom you've described uh, desires and vasanas as bondage, and if that freedom from the bondage is one of the things you can attain in this life as you move down the road. And also material pleasures. Yep. By being more uh, spiritual you will find that your mind becomes less rajasic. Therefore, you're more clear in your mind. Your decisions, whether it be in the business uh, arena or whether it be in your corporation where you're working or your workplace, you become a more valued player. You become a more valued worker. And your bosses recognize this within yourself. Your fellow employees uh, recognize this. So it benefits you. And as you said in the last episode, the further you go down the road, the less you're disturbed and disillusioned. The less you're chasing desires, the less you're uh, tied up in, in the illusion of this life. Correct. Yeah. So friends, if you're listening to this on an audio podcast, feel free to email me. The email is gita, G-I-T-A, Memoirs, M E M O I R S, Gita Memoirs of a Psychiatrist. You can look up the spelling of psychiatrist. Gita <laughs> Memoirs of a Psychiatrist at gmail.com. And I promise if I see your messages, I will respond. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.